Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dhananjay Sharma, and I'm here to share my journey with uh, India's uh, first private moon mission. Uh, that's not Wally, that's Ika. She's the rover. Uh, sorry. So, yeah, like this slide says, uh, quite simply put, uh, we team Indus are attempting to architect a new India, one moon shot at a time, both figuratively and literally. Tell me if you recognize this photograph on the screen. Great, uh, fantastic audience. So like many of you, uh, my first ever contact with space and science itself was through science fiction. And I think it's amazingly lucky that all of us are born in an age and time where there's rich science fiction to augment and inspire the dreams that we have. To quote a very famous writer, today's imagination is tomorrow's science. A little closer to reality, no points for guessing who this gentleman is. Uh, he's amazing. He's literally out of the pages of a science fiction novel. The kind of things he's trying to do, the way humans interact through technology with the world that surrounds them, not only just on one front, but six different fronts is amazing. But his work in space, in the space industry is what inspires me the most. He once famously said that he'd like to die on Mars, just not while landing. A little closer to home, so this is a little quiz. Can anybody guess what's on the screen right now? ISRO, yes, this is an ISRO facility, but what mission is this? Any guesses? Sorry? Uh, a little before that. So this is Chandrayaan-1, India's first ever space exploration mission. This happened in 2008, and this is the first time India entered this elite club of countries that had embarked on space exploration missions. So why am I telling you all of this? This is to basically set context as to why we're doing what we're doing. Because your natural assumption would be is that we're crazy. Why would a private enterprise want to fly something to the moon? So this is why we're doing what we're doing. This is called the Google Lunar X Prize. It's a global space race that started off in 2007. Uh, we discovered this competition in 2009. And just like any Indian, we said, yeah, somebody else will do it. Um, we, when we discovered this competition, there was no Indian team. And, and we just naturally assumed that, yeah, some Indian will do it. And what we will do is we will support them. So we waited a year and a half till literally the last day of registration, where, you know, I think the XPRIZE Foundation, where the organizers got fed up and said, why don't you register? And that's when it hit us. You know, it's about time we stopped waiting for other people to do something and become the change we wanted to see. If we wanted to change India as a country, what's thought of this country and the ecosystem in which we are growing today, we had to be that change. We can't wait for somebody else to change it and then go forward and support it. So we officially became the, 30, uh, the 29th team in the Google Lunar X Prize in February of 2011. And uh, we've been the only Indian team since. Uh, started off with 29 teams, uh, went down to 16 teams in 2014. And as of the start of this year, there are just five teams in this competition. There are two American and Israeli a Japanese and us. So out of these five teams, there's just us. I mean, it, it's, it's great that you're clapping because we're top five, because what I'm going to say next will, might make you want to clap more. But uh, out of the two American teams, none of them have a chance. Uh, the Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese are flying their rover aboard our spacecraft, and I'll get back and get to that in the next slide. And uh, the Israeli are our only real competitors. So honestly speaking, it's a two-horse race. We're not top five, we're top two. <laughs> so just to encapsulate it, something that would be easy for everyone to remember, Team Indus is flying a privately funded spacecraft to the moon in early 2018. This is a feat that's been achieved by only three other countries before us. It's been the USA and the USSR back in the 1960s, 70s, and China most recently in 2013. They've all done it through their government agencies, and they've all done it with infinite resources and time. Like I said, we started off with four people. Uh, today, when you look at the pioneers and leaders of private space industry, names that come to mind are SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic. All of them have started with immense amount of experience in the aerospace industry and even deeper pockets. We started off with four people and no background. 
Uh, and literally one of the first things that we did as a company was Google search how to build a spacecraft. Because <laughs> we had absolutely no idea. So the exact opposites and prerequisites of, you know, starting an aerospace company, uh, I think we took it a little too hard when Richard Branson said that the first, the quickest way to become a millionaire is to start a billionaire and invest in aerospace. So these are the three major protagonists of our mission when it comes to technology. To all of your far right is the PSLV XR. It's a medium lift rocket. It's ISRO's war horse, and uh, it has the capacity to carry 1.4 tons. This is something that we are purchasing from ISRO directly, and this is not something that we're going to be building. What we're going to be building is the spacecraft and the rover. Now, our spacecraft is what's going to solve the problem of getting to the moon and soft landing there. That's part of the problem statement of the Google Lunar X Prize. Weighs about 600 kilograms at liftoff. Uh, out of those 600 kilograms, about 400 to 420 kilograms is all fuel. So when we land, we'll be between 180 to 200 kilograms. Um, and it's what's going to carry all of our primary payloads. So one of our primary payloads is our rover ECA, not WALL-E. Uh, so any guesses what ECA might stand for, ECA? Uh, no idea? It's a Hindi phrase. Yeah, so... Sorry? E, yeah, E is A, yeah. Good. So ECA stands for Ek Choti Si Asha. Because we believe that ECA is someone who's going to be carrying a billion hopes with her or small in size and, you know, uh, take the hopes and dreams of a billion Indians to the moon and kind of become the first Indian to ever set wheels there. So uh, she's the one, she's one of our primary payloads. Our other primary payload is the Japanese rover. Like I told you, Team Hakuto doesn't have a spacecraft of their own. Hence, they have to hitch a ride with us. She's going to be the first of her kind on the moon, a below 7 kilogram rover, a micro class. In comparison, the lightest rover on the moon today is 135 kilograms. So this is our space map. We get dropped off to my far right by the PSLV. That's about 800 kilometers from the Earth's surface. We do a couple of orbits around the Earth and then slingshot towards the moon. Once we get close enough to the moon, we slow down and basically get caught by the moon's gravity. Once we're caught by the moon's gravity, we keep reducing our orbits till we enter what's our orbit S3, which is a selenocentric orbit. And that's how far Chandrayaan-1 got. So we're 99.99% .99 confident we'll get till here because the mission director of Chandrayaan-1 is now the mission director of Team Indus Moon Mission as well. So that's the kind of experience that's going behind executing this mission. Once we're in S3 and lunar dawn occurs on the surface, we d initiate our descent. And this is by far the most exciting 900 seconds of this mission. The entire journey from the Earth to the Moon is about 28 days. 900 seconds is what keeps us praying to every god we know because this is a completely autonomous process. This is the most tricky and crucial part of this mission and that's why only three countries in the world have managed to land on the moon. It's not, it's not quite as easy as, uh, as building a self-driving car on Earth, but it's, it's, it's about a 10 time more or order of magnitude uh, complexity problem over there. So once we initiate descent, uh, it's a completely autonomous process. The spacecraft uh, initiates a descent, autonomously lands on the surface of the moon. Once we're there, we have 14 days of surface operations, and we get to drive ECA around for 14 days. So this is the team uh, that I'm part of. And this is, as you can see on the screen, uh, a very, very diverse bunch of people. We have basically three different average ages across the organization. There's the 25 to 27-year-olds where I fall in. There is the 65 to 80 year olds where the retired ISRO scientists work for us. And just amongst them, we have about 400 years worth of space science experience that goes to work for us every day. And then in the middle, we have what's called adult supervision, the 40 year olds, uh, for both sides actually. So, and this is also our secret sauce because we have a group of young, enthusiastic, and hungry engineers wanting to prove themselves. And they have a firm hand of guidance and experience from the ISRO experts. And it's amazing to watch this dynamic work when you're sitting in front of a gentleman who's launched 49 different satellites and you tell him, no, you're wrong. 
So uh, along the way, another thing that we've done is we've gained a lot of credibility because it was very hard early on in 2012, 2013 to convince anyone that a group of 20 year olds were building something that's going to the moon. So our first major piece of credibility, like, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot your name, so sorry. Uh, uh, when I was introduced, we said, we won the Google Lunar X Prize milestone prize. So that was set, mid set midway through the competition, and we won a million dollars to be able to prove that our spacecraft can both launch and land on the moon. Uh, back then, that was a lot of money. A million dollars is a lot of money. In hindsight, today, it's about 1 70th the cost of this entire mission. Also along the way, uh, another major milestone in terms of credibility was that we got a launch contract from ISRO, making us the first ever private enterprise in India to be ever given a dedicated PSLV, and also becoming the first ever private enterprise in the world to be, uh, to be assigned a PSLV rocket. Uh, Google is also another private entity that's purchased a PSLV, but ours is the only one in production. We're launching about six and a half months from now, and as I'm currently speaking, the first pieces of our PSIV rocket are being built in Sri Harikota. Another major space agency that we've signed with is Kines, which is the French space agency. And uh, they're sending our cameras along, uh, they're sending their space grade cameras along with us. So these are some of the backers. They're as crazy as we are, but what really, really ties them together is what they truly believe this mission stands for. It's one thing to say that this is technology being built out of India, the kind of ecosystem growth that this will bring about, but it's also the kind of impact that it's going to have on the generations to come. If you remember in 1969 when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, every American then truly believed that they could do anything that they wanted and dreamt in, dreamt and believed in. So that's the kind of impact that these people believe that we are going to bring about in India, and hence uh, that's why they support us. So when, when we had these people, when we had these people come in and support us, we realized that this was not a moonshot or a, or a problem statement that we, we had to keep restricted to ourselves. This was something that we needed to share with the people of India, because at the end of the day, when we do land on the moon, we make India the fourth nation to do so. This was something that we wanted to take out to the public of India and share with as many people as possible, and truly make this moonshot every Indian's. Hence, we named this campaign the Har Indian Ka Moonshot. And one of our first efforts in, in this attempt to take this mission to as many people as possible was launched in June of 2016. It was called Lap to Moon. It was a challenge to anybody below the age of 25 to come forward and design an experiment that we could fly to the moon and that would help sustain human life in space. The second in initiative was we designed a bus and outfitted it with artifacts of our mission. We've taken it to over 11 different locations all across India and covered about 40,000 government school kids because they don't have the access that we would to be able to understand and learn about this mission on a daily basis. And finally, for people who are over 25 or missed out on, on Lap to Moon and are not studying in government school kids, uh, as government school kids, we, we're planning to launch something that's called the Moonshot Crew. This is, a, this is a program where we're inviting every Indian to come forward and associate themselves with this mission. Stand up and be counted and you know, basically make sure that something like this happens out of India. We're hoping that out of a country of 1.2 billion, 10 lakh people will come forward and out of these 10 lakh people, we'll give 5,000 people, 5,000 people in a chance to experience this mission firsthand. Um, just to quickly take you through, so basically what happens is you come forward and because you're helping this mission happen, we will take your name and inscribe it on a cube made out of nickel and carbon fiber, put it aboard our spacecraft and launch it to the moon. Your names will forever remain on the surface of the moon because there's no material degradation and you'll be immortalized that way. Another thing that one of 50 of the 5,000 people will get to see is sitting in our mission command center as this mission goes live you'll get to see something that only three kinds of people get to see in India, either the Prime Minister, or a person working in ISRO, or an owner of a PSRV rocket. You get to witness one or the rocket launch of our mission live. You get to celebrate with the team as this mission happens every, uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. And finally, you get to witness a moment in history that has never been seen before. You get to watch as a country becomes part of a, of a club of elite spacefaring nations 
and you will for humanity see the first time private enterprise embark on a space exploration mission, something that's been never ever done before. So that's us, that's Team Indus, and that's me. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of my talk. Thank you.